Good grief, right? We are already dealing with tumult in the U.S. House of Representatives, a horrifying war in Israel that has brought its own war of rhetoric worldwide, another potential presidential impeachment with Trump 2.0 looming over it all, and the specter of artificial intelligence upending the basic rules of how we understand the world around us. Can we really handle any more? This week on the program, rather than take a production break to catch our breath, we will instead visit some updates about the big stories of the moment and what God might be doing through each one. I'm Steve Hicks, Director of Podcast Ministries for Talking Donkey International, and this is Something's Happening Here. All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Something's Happening Here. Today is Monday, if you're watching this show in real time as we broadcast it. And I want to say that I want to say welcome to all of our new viewers. Last week, we talked about the war in Israel, and it attracted a lot of attention, and a lot of people subscribed to our various channels. And so I want to say thank you for doing that. Thank you for putting uh, your faith in Jesus Christ, but your trust in us to deliver you the messages of Jesus Christ. So thank you again for showing up. What we do would not be the same without you watching. So I appreciate you very much. This week, as I mentioned in the opener, we're going to uh, take a break from a new topic because there are already so many topics that we have talked about, but which have not reached any sort of real resolution. So this is going to be more of like a survey week, um, a review, so to speak, where we're going to go back to the big topics we've talked about recently, one for each day, and then just get an update, see what's happening prophetically and spiritually. And that way, hopefully, we'll have a nice, edifying, challenging show like we usually do, but also it'll be a little bit easier on our hearts uh, than usual um, because, man, the world is really messed up right now, isn't it? So... Um, that I'm actually going to start with the scripture today and then move to the uh, to the article. So that's backwards of how I usually do it. But the reason is pretty simple. And when you join me in Luke chapter 21, I will show you why we're taking this approach this week. Luke 21 is uh, the signs of the times chapter in Luke's version. It's the equivalent of Mark 13 and Matthew 24. And in it, this is where Jesus says all the things that are going to happen in the world right before he comes. And then verse 34 is a, it's not a summary, but it is, um, it's a warning. It's not so much a sign of what's going to happen, but what's going to happen in your heart. And he's warning us against it. So Jesus says, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day with a capital D come on you unexpectedly. So that day with a capital D is going to be the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, and he's telling us very directly that we have to guard our hearts. There's some sort of potential condition of our hearts that will lead us to these various behaviors that are outlined. And then the result of that would be that Jesus comes and we're completely unaware or unready. Obviously, I don't want to be unaware or unready, and I don't want you to be either of those things either. So we are taking a break. That's why we're doing it this, this way this week. We do not want our hearts to become overcharged and weighed down. We just want to recognize the world is really violent and terrible. We all know that. And we're just going to kind of percolate in that reality for this week and maybe learn a little bit more, but we're going to take a break before entering into something new and big. Now, I have a little video to share with you because the, uh, well, because uh, this idea is not new to me as a minister. I was just sharing with the producer right before we rolled cameras here that in my pastoral ministry, I preached a sermon on the topic of burnout shortly before the pandemic happened. And, um, you know, not knowing that the world was about to shut down. But my point was very similar to what we're talking about here today, that Jesus warned us this was going to happen. And he's telling us what to do about it. Guard your hearts. Take heed. Make sure this doesn't happen to you. So I have a, a short video that I, I think is a great illustration of how quickly the world works and relative to the past and therefore why 
this warning from Jesus is really is meant for all people all through time, but it's really meant for us, like really, really, really meant for us. So I'm going to turn it over to my producer and ask you to roll the video, please. So we're watching uh, NASCAR, uh, two different NASCAR pit stops, one happening in 1981 and one happening in 2019. And just in my description of what we're watching, you see that the 2019 car is gone already. It's 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 up back on the racetrack. And the 1981 car is still being meticulously worked on. And it keeps going for some time. <laughs> so why am I sharing this with you? It's because this is such an excellent illustration of how much more quickly the world works now than it ever used to, where even the one of the fastest things that we could come up with in the early 80s seems slow like molasses now well if you apply this issue this this idea to everything in life you see that it's not limited to nascar um obviously we've got our our phones now that do everything much faster than we ever used to uh, i moved if you're a longtime watcher of the show then you would know that i moved from california to the american south uh, recently and i one of the things i was looking forward to was a slowing down of the pace here but you know i did find that a little bit but not much because the internet is here too and the culture of running 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 is everywhere even in the drowsy south so we have to take active measures to guard our hearts now the article for today comes from helpguide.org and it's on the topic of burnout. It's called burnout prevention and treatment because burnout is the word that our medical people use to describe this phenomenon Jesus is warning us about. And you'll see why when we get into the guts of the, uh, of the article here. Starting, near, starting right at the beginning, it says, burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. As the stress continues, you begin to lose the interest and motivation that led you to take on a certain role in the first place. Burnout reduces productivity and saps your energy, leaving you feeling increasingly helpless, hopeless, cynical, and resentful. Eventually, you feel like you have nothing more to give. Now, this may just seem like stress to you, right? and everybody's stressed out right now. Um, we've got multiple layers of stress, right? We're stressed because um, the economy is so bad and the president is ruining everything if you're of one particular mindset. And then if you're of the opposite mindset, you're stressed because the former president who was so awful at everything might be coming back. And so like nobody's happy right now with the government. Nobody's happy about this war going on in Israel. Half of us really want Israel to prevail and the other half seem to really want Hamas to prevail, but nobody's happy that it's happening except maybe the American evangelicals if you watched last week's show. <laughs> All right? But there's stress everywhere. There's stress just everywhere. Burnout's not the same as stress though. So I'm going to skip down a little bit into the um into the article. Uh, I'm going to stop on signs and symptoms of burnout just so we know what we're talking about. It says, most of us have days when we feel helpless, overloaded, or unappreciated, when dragging ourselves out of bed requires the determination of Hercules. But if you feel like this most of the time, then you may be burned out. Burnout is a gradual process. It doesn't happen overnight, but it can creep up on you. So down a little bit further, we got, if you want to check out the article, there are physical signs, emotional signs, behavioral signs that you're suffering from burnout. But really what I'm after is underneath that, the difference between stress and burnout. Burnout may be the result of unrelenting stress, but it isn't the same as too much stress. Stress by and large involves too much, like too many pressures that demand too much of you physically and mentally. However, stressed people can still imagine that if they can just get everything under control, they'll feel better. And that, I mean, does that sound familiar? You go to work and you had one expectation and then your boss gives you four others and now you're swimming in stuff and you feel overwhelmed and like your stomach is in a knot and you you know it's time for lunch but you're not hungry because you, you know, all the stuff to do but even all in 
all of that stress, you're thinking like, okay, just get this one task and then I can take my break and then I'll do the other one and then I'll get to go home or whatever, right? You can kind of organize it in your brain. The article continues to tell us why burnout is not the same way. Burnout, on the other hand, is about not enough. Being burned out means feeling empty and, emo and mentally exhausted, devoid of motivation and beyond caring. People experiencing burnout often don't see any hope of positive change in their situations. If excessive stress feels like you're drowning in responsibilities, then burnout is a sense of being all dried up. And while you're usually aware of being under a lot of stress, you don't always notice burnout when it happens. So that's really um, that's really scary, right? It's 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 very pernicious. That's a I know it's a big word in the internet. It doesn't like big words, but go ahead and look it up because it's a great word. <laughs> it's a very pernicious condition because you often don't even realize it's happening. And how can you fight against something if you don't even know that it's happening? So what are we going to do about it? Well, first, I want to take this idea and measure it against Luke 21, right? What we just read from Jesus to point out why I'm harping on burnout as opposed to stress specifically. Think about it. Think about it. If burnout is a sense of emptiness, I've got nothing else. I've got no hope of it changing. I just every day is the same drudgery until I die, right? You can easily see how Jesus says Make sure this doesn't happen to you or else that day will come upon you unexpectedly. Of course, if you're like very stressed out, chances are you're hyper vigilant, right? You're not, you're, you're not like lacking vigilance. You're probably hyper vigilant. So if, if the greatest event that has ever happened on planet earth is going to happen and you are hyper vigilant, you're probably not going to miss it, right? But if your emotions are such where it's like, oh, I don't even care. Oh, I can't even get out of bed. Oh, there's an earthquake, whatever. I hope I die. You know, if, 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 if you're burned out like that, where there's just nothing left inside of you, Jesus could show up in the sky right outside your window and you wouldn't even care. Or you wouldn't even realize somehow. This is why we're talking about this today. I don't want to be a contributor to your burnout and talking about a never ending condition of like government brokenness and warfare and death and thievery and all that stuff like that can weigh on our hearts badly weigh on our hearts so this week that's this is my long introduction to why we're doing it differently this week cuz i want you and me alike to make it out of this week in good spirits not bad and i don't want any of this to weigh heavily on our hearts. The proper role for all this bad news is to make us realize that Jesus is coming soon, not to delight in the bad news, like I accused our evangelical brethren of doing last week, but just to recognize it and hope for the soon return of Jesus Christ and draw near to him to be ready for that. That's my prayer for you. And as you come back tomorrow and the days after, we're going to talk about specific current events that we have discussed in the past on previous shows, but we're going to go through their updates to see what's happening here, right? What's happening behind the spiritual veil. So come on back and we're going to pray right now. And then I'll go through how you can make sure you're subscribed to come back. Let's pray. Loving Father, uh, I'm so glad that you care about the condition of our hearts. I'm glad that you, even though you have an entire universe to run and there's nothing that escapes your attention on the macro scale, there's also nothing that escapes your attention in my life. And you care deeply about the level of stress and the level of burnout that I might be experiencing. So Father, you tell us to take heed. What if we can't? What if we need you to do that for us? Come and take over our hearts, Lord, and conform them to the condition that you want them to be in to live in the world but not of the world as you instructed your people so long ago bless us and forgive us father and above all no matter what storm is happening around us or even in the world around us give us peace give us that peace that surpasses all understanding as you have promised and we thank you 
and we love you, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, friends. So you're probably subscribed already, but just in case you're not, that, and here's how to do it. If you're on Facebook watching this, please like the page where you're seeing this. You'll become a follower of it. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel that you're watching and also hit your notification bell. If you are on Rumble, thank you for doing that. Hit your follow button. If you're on Locals, thank you for doing that. And uh, thank you for joining the community for free. And I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider becoming a paid supporter. It doesn't cost you very much money. It does gain you access to more material that's not available elsewhere. And it really helps us to stay on the air. So please pray about that. And lastly, you can always go to talkingdonkeyinternational.org slash podcast and find our archive of shows there. Um, and I keep hinting that we'll have more to advertise soon. I'm still hinting, though. <laughs> I don't have more to tell you than that. So just pray for us and, and have some patience. And we will be in more places soon by the grace of God. Have a great evening. God bless you. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you back here tomorrow.